And welcome to our latest edition of Hidden Tracks, Stories from BART. I'm Chris Filippi, and this time we're focusing on a matter very important to BART riders, that of earthquake safety. And to learn more about what BART is doing to keep the system safe, I'm joined by Thomas Horton. He's a group manager involved in the earthquake safety program. Tom, thanks so much for your time. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. I, I think a lot of folks really are not aware of Measure AA. It goes back, obviously, a few years. Kind of explain it for us. What is Measure AA, and what is it doing for BART? Measure AA uh, was a $980 million bond issue, general obligation bond, uh, that was issued for BART to retrofit its existing, uh, original existing system, uh, against uh, likely earthquakes in the Bay Area. It was based upon a study that we had done identifying the vulnerabilities in the system and proposing a retrofit approach, which the, the BART board then uh, certified. And based on that, we sized the bond to uh, meet that need. Yeah, and that work's been going on for years now. Tell us what's been done to the system. Well, it's probably easier to describe what hasn't been done yet. Uh, out of the, the overall 90-some uh, uh, miles of work that we had to do, we have only about four miles of aerial structure left. It's on the uh, a Fremont line. We're, we're working on that now. In fact, those are mostly in construction. And then we have uh, further retrofits on the Transbay tube, and that's it. That's all that's left to do. Wow. And it sounds like the money has been well spent. Can you speak to that? Well, what we can say is that, uh, first of all, the original overall program budget was $1.307 billion. We had funds from other sources. It has been reduced to uh, by about $30 million, and we still expect to finish the work. Uh, in addition, we've actually been able to accomplish more work than was originally in the scope because we were able to save money on uh, the retrofits in the earlier stages, which we're now plowing back into the system to get uh, more performance, if you will. Yeah, I think one of the areas on the system that people are always interested in is the Transbay tube. It's just this miracle of engineering. Uh, talk about the earthquake uh, safety level for the Transbay tube. What's been done there, and how safe is it? Well, we are designing the retrofits uh, for the tube to a much higher level than for the rest of the system. So we're talking about very, very rare earthquakes here, okay? In the most uh, devastating earthquake, which we define as a 1,000-year event, something that might happen once every 1,000 years, uh, we expect that the tube could crack and leak, not fail, just crack and leak, and leak enough that we would want to uh, evacuate it and fix it. Uh, that's the retrofit that we are getting ready to carry out. Uh, we have already done retrofit sufficient to uh, make it safe for pretty much any earthquake below that level. I mean, uh, we have looked at, for example, the 500-year event, and the tube survives pretty well. It doesn't really have any significant problems. So really, we're looking at this very, very large earthquake. And as such, then, our, our riders should feel pretty comfortable that unless there's a real, I mean, sort of Armageddon-type event, the tube will survive okay. And can you say similar for the rest of the system that's undergone this retrofit work? Well, the rest of the system uh, we designed for a 500-year event uh, for safety, which means that th the system won't fall down and will protect people uh, from major injuries, but you wouldn't want to run trains on it afterward. Uh, for a, a smaller event, we have also designed it to remain operable. So uh, again, a 500-year event is pretty rare. It doesn't happen that often. So our riders, uh, you know, the probability of getting being caught in that is very, very low. I'm speaking with Tom Horton. He's the uh, group manager involved with the Earthquake Safety Program. Uh, of course, many longtime residents in the Bay Area will always think back to 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake. Everybody knows where they were when that happened. Really an uh, uh, incredible story for BART. I mean, as you know, it was just a matter of hours before service was restored on the system. Uh, yes, that's correct, and it actually taught us a few things about uh, how to go about evaluating our structures because, as you know, the earthquake epicenter was down near Watsonville, way, way south, and so you would expect the damage to be, say, in Fremont, which is the closest area to the earthquake. In fact, the only damage we sustained was at the, uh, right at the entrance to the Transbay tube on the east side, and they were able to repair that uh, within a few hours, 
and, and put the system back into operation. And of course, it served a very vital purpose for the first 30 days or so while the, tra- while the uh, Bay Bridge was being repaired. Yeah, I know one of the areas still that's being looked at, the Berkeley Hills Tunnel. Kind of talk about the status right there, and, and what are some of the options there going forward? Uh, yes, the Berkeley Hills Tunnel, uh, the main issue there, of course, is that it crosses the Hayward Fault in the tunnel. And so if you get an earthquake large enough, the, earthquake, the uh, fault will actually displace, which is another name for saying it'll move, okay? And you will get a break. The tunnel will break. And uh, when tunnels break, they don't just sort of break. They, you're going to see concrete falling and, you know, things like that. Uh, that's a very, very difficult problem to solve, especially when you're talking about the kinds of movement that we're talking about. You could see four to five foot offsets there, very large. And tunnel liners just aren't built to take that kind of movement. Um, so at the time of the original uh, program, we couldn't really identify a practical fix for this. Uh, there just wasn't something out there that we could think of. More recently, uh, we have been looking at uh, some new methods uh, that involve creating what, what we call a segmented liner. Instead of being continuous concrete through the fault zone, it would be a series of rings, concrete rings, uh, large enough so that if the tunnel offsets, there will still be enough room for the train to get through. So these are oversized rings, right? So if they move by four feet, you'll still have enough room for the train to get through. And because they're rings, they can slide against each other, move across the fault, and minimize the, the loss of tunnels and be able to put it back in service fairly quickly with a certain amount of repair. So, so where are we at in terms of like trying to move forward with that? I mean, obviously, that sounds like kind of a long-term approach. Yes, it's very expensive. We've, we've presented our, the alternatives to the BART board. Uh, they, they are aware of it. Uh, the, the problem now is finding funding to do it. And, and we're talking about very large sums of money, so it's not something easy to do. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is, in the Bay Area, we're just going to be surrounded by earthquake faults. We have the San Andreas Fault along the peninsula in San Francisco. We have the Hayward Fault in the East Bay, among many others. We just got a reminder recently there was a 3.5 earthquake uh, in Piedmont. I mean, this is just one of the things we kind of have to live with. We do. Uh, the unique thing about the BART uh, tunnel is that it is crossing in tunnel. Most of the other faults you've mentioned either were not crossing the fault or were crossing it what we call at grade, which means, you know, along the surface or in an aerial structure, those are much easier to retrofit for a fault offset than a tunnel is. And that's one of the reasons the Berkeley Hills Tunnel is so difficult. Talk about uh, the new technology involved. I think it's fascinating that there's an earthquake warning system out there and BART is participating in that. Kind of talk about how that works and, and whether it's come into play yet. Uh, Well, the earthquake warning system isn't strictly a part of the earthquake safety program, so I'm not as familiar with all of the details, but it is a system that utilizes the existing network of uh, seismometers and other instruments all over the Bay Area to identify the earthquake and its location very quickly and pass that information to other places because, of course, the earthquake waves are going to travel. It takes a certain amount of time for them to travel from place to place, and our new electronic devices. If you can get the signal fast enough, you can actually warn the group before the earthquake wave gets there. That's the basic idea. Now, we're not talking about a lot of warning. We're talking about anywhere from a few seconds to maybe a minute worth of warning. But with that, you can, you can do things like, you know, sound alarms. You, uh, there's one I know of, for example, a fire, uh, fire department that's going to open all the doors to their fire stations so that if the earthquake hits and the, and the doors rack, They'll be, they won't have them stuck shut. They'll be open, you know. So things like that you can do. Uh, in our case, we could slow the trains down so that when the earthquake hits, uh, uh, there's not as much uh, throwing around of the passengers, if you will, uh, and things like that can be done. Coming back to the work that's been done under uh, Measure AA, uh, the changes that have made these retrofits, is it anything that the passengers will notice, or is it just kind of so built into the system it just kind of mixes into the environment of the stations? Yeah, we like to say our work is work you'll never see. Uh, most of it is underground and has been buried, so you can't see it. That's the footing work. There are some, uh, some work on what we call the, the uh, pier, uh, I'm sorry, the pier caps, which are the big hammer-headed things on the top of the column that you see out there. Some of those you'll see have been thickened, and maybe they've been expanded a little bit. If you look sharp, you can see them, but basically they're, that's difficult to see. 
none of this affects the passengers directly. I mean, they, they could walk right by it and it doesn't bother them. But uh, it, if you wanted to look for it, you could see some effects of what we've done. You're looking at all of the work that BART has put in. I mean, this has been a process that's gone on for more than a decade. Uh, How confident are you in the system? I mean, you told me some of these structures are ready for a 500-year event. I mean, that sounds like a really big thing to be prepared for. Yes, and we've been we've taken that seriously. Um, I mentioned that you know we'd save money earlier. Throughout the time that we've done our engineering and such, we'll save money, but not if it compromises the performance of the system. That is paramount. And uh, we do have pretty good confidence based upon, we've run scenarios, for example, earthquake scenarios that show that these these structures are going to pretty much behave the way we expect them to behave in these large earthquakes. Now, a lot of it, of course, depends upon where the earthquake hits, right? If it's right near the, the system versus far away. We have tried to use the worst possible case that we can think of to do these designs so that that makes us pretty confident that wherever the earthquake hits, we should be ready for it. And just to wrap it up for riders that are on their commute, I mean, 430,000 people a day and growing, how safe should they feel as they ride on the BART system? Well, let's put it this way. They're probably safer in the BART system than they would be in many of the buildings around uh, the Bay Area, which have not been retrofitted for these types of earthquakes. And so, you know, if, if you want to feel safe, get on the BART system versus being in, you know, certain buildings. Now, of course, the modern office buildings are, are better, but you know, many of the older buildings in the, in, the, in the East Bay aren't ready for these earthquakes and will probably cause more damage than will to the BART system. Thomas Horton with BART's Earthquake Safety Program. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for listening to the latest edition of Hidden Tracks, Stories from BART.